Just days before the first anniversary of implementing the Iran nuclear deal, Iran received its first post-sanctions aircraft. Airbus CEO Fabrice Brugier disembarking alongside Iranian officials. A win-win solution. The Iran nuclear deal carved out sanctions exemptions for aviation as part of a diplomatic trade-off, the slowing of Iran's nuclear program in exchange for the lifting of international economic sanctions on Tehran. But one year later, global corporations who use American dollars are still hesitant to do business in Iran. U.S. sanctions still apply to those transactions. I think what we will see from the U.S. business community is an enormous amount of frustration. That was a year ago, and Wynn Siegel, an attorney advising U.S. companies on business in Iran, says that frustration still persists. Two years after Obama normalized relations between the U.S. and Cuba, the first U.S.-Cuba joint venture is already approved and underway. Roswell Park Cancer Institute has partnered with the Center of Molecular Immunology to test a Cuban medical therapy on Americans with cancer. Both of us thinking, let's do something bold, and we did. But the institute says the product is still several years away from being ready to market. According to the U.S.-Cuba Trade and Economic Council, in the first two years since the announcement of normalization, Cuba gained up to $12 billion in economic impact. But in the same period, the council says, U.S.-based companies earned just $720 million, almost all of it travel-related. The reality is, while there are 35 U.S. companies now doing business in Cuba, hardly any are exporting products. Of course, the most prominent trade deal of the Obama administration was the Trans-Pacific Partnership. It gained a lot of interest from the Asia-Pacific region, and it would have had a tremendous impact on industries in auto and dairy. But the U.S. Congress never passed it. Jessica Stone, CGTN, Washington.